May the words of my mouth, the meditation of each one of our hearts, be always acceptable to our strength and redeemer. Amen. If you do a little digging into the life of St. Francis of Assisi, you're going to find a rich collection of stories to enjoy. They range from the mundane to really the miraculous. You hear of his early life as a wool merchant's son, his relative privilege, his high-minded military aspirations, his drunkenness, and his near supernatural conversion. There are stories of his gentility which are reinforced by the iconography which we see of Francis in the form of a mostly bald-headed hermit surrounded by animals, squirrels, and birds. That's maybe the most beloved, most comforting image of Francis. The Francis of the animals and the nature, a person who is so aware of God's presence that he's capable in every moment of life of rejoicing in the full knowledge and love of God. The image of Francis, it's a lovely one to hold on to in the minds and in our hearts. I think it served as an inspiration for so many generations. He's captured our hearts. But there's something that is so attractive and alluring almost about the peace and serenity that we see in the statues of St. Francis that are kind of popular among neighborhood gardeners. Uh, when he is cast in marble or concrete, Francis almost seems unbothered. The news of the world, it doesn't seem to change his expression. The horrors that we've come to accept as a normal part of American life never seem to move this saint. His face remains peaceful, his gaze resting softly on the stone bird that's perched on his stone finger, making us believe if his heart too must be made of stone, the staint and stasis. But the actual Francis, the Francis who fell down and got back up, man, he had a heart that broke over the injustices of the world. The Francis that preceded the statuary, he was a small man in possession of what we might consider to be completely irrational belief in God. His faith was not measured, it wasn't safe, and it certainly wasn't polite. Francis recognized that the path of Jesus is a path of downward mobility. To follow Jesus, to become like Jesus, it's to become perfectly dependent on God alone. It's to shun the idolatry of the world with its preference of, for power in favor of a radical fidelity to God. He believed it so much that he renounced all of his possessions, all of his wealth. The downward mobility of Jesus, after which Francis patterned his own life, it's frankly humbling. And I think while we don't need to sell all that we have, I think it does invite us to take a second look at silence and quietness. It challenges us to see the glory of God in the face of the outcast. It asks us to become the outcast for the loving of the untouchables in a way that society says is foolish or unsafe. This kind of faith, this Christ-centered faith, it makes a mess of everything that we try to keep neat and tidy. There's nothing wrong and there's nothing that anyone can say to force you into adopting this kind of faith. I'm not even sure that God could even force it upon you. This is the kind of faith that dawns on a person in a dream, or the kind of faith that calls us out like a voice emerging from a crucifix, which said to Francis in that darkened church, rebuild my church. What would we do if we actually heard God speaking to us so very plainly, saying, rebuild my church, restore my creation, love me with a new heart, become the beloved community. 
for me, it stirs up the imagination even to consider such a radical kind of question. You see, Francis was not made of stone, and neither are we. Our hearts are soft, they're fragile, but they're resilient. We're affected by the news. Oh my gosh, the news. We're afflicted by the injustices of this world. And we may even find ourselves on the precipice of asking, what would it mean to have a faith like that of Francis? What would it mean to rebuild God's church or restore God's creation in the places where it's fallen into ruin, both in our own lives and the world around us? I can't answer that question for you. But I believe strongly that it is a question that is worth asking. Jesus says that God's truth is sooner revealed to infants than to the wise, the intelligent, and the powerful. To let us become youthful fools like Francis. Let's remember that we're not statues frozen to the world, but we're flesh and blood children of God. May we, like Francis, become nothing less than servants of peace. Amen.